Welcome to Church of the Missions online worship service. Today, Sunday, June 28, we're so glad that you have joined us. We gather to worship online as we have been doing now for over three months. It's been three months of plus of the pandemic, the COVID-19 that we've been living with, and we've been, we're tired of hearing about the pandemic. We're all looking forward to the time when we can reconnect in person. But the church, while being technically closed, the building is closed. In, real, in reality, the church is deployed. We are deployed as the people of God in our families, in our households, in our circles, be they five or ten people. Uh, and God calls us to be light and to bring life and to make sure that our words bring light and life during this whole time. So, yeah, we want to gather to encourage each other to hear from the Word of God, to worship, to sing songs of praise and adoration to God. God is worthy of our worship and our adoration. I want to read from Psalm 26 as we start today. Sections from Psalm 26. Test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For I have always been mindful of your unfailing love and I have lived in reliance on your faithfulness. Lord, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. My feet stand on level ground. In the great congregation, I will praise the Lord. So the great congregation of the Lord is spread out and we are in our homes and we are spread across the world. I was speaking with our missionary to China uh, who is um, back in North America, on f not really on furlough here, simply because they cannot be in China because of the lockdown. And just mindful of God's goodness, even in the midst of when we want to be one place, we want to be gathered together in person, but we cannot be. My friend really, really wants to be in China, but he cannot be, so he's getting used to settling into what's the current reality and adapting to that and, and seeking God's peace even as he does that. That's what we should all do. So yeah, we're just so glad that you joined us today. We are going to just open in a word of prayer. Thank you, God, that you're with us. And uh, thank you that throughout this whole pandemic, throughout this extensive lockdown, Lord, you have been present to us. Thank you that we have been able to meet on Sundays to worship, and we've been able to meet on Wednesdays and Thursdays for Bible study, and many of us have been connecting throughout the week uh, by phone and uh, on video conferencing calls. Lord, thanks that all this technology exists. A hundred years ago, the last major worldwide plague that I remember, Spanish flu, uh, th none of this was available. For, so we give you thanks, Lord, that we do have this opportunity. As limiting as it seems, Lord, nevertheless, we can enter into your presence in our own homes. And we thank you and we delight in you and we proclaim that you are good and we have ceaseless reasons to proclaim your praise. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
end draws near and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forever more, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship Him. begin, I just encourage you to just feel free to worship in whatever way you so choose. Wherever your heart's at today, God knows it. And so just feel free. Feel free. Let his presence just soak in. Uh, let it resonate in your heart and your mind. We have flags on the side. Let him just take over your being. Let him just flood into that hole, that gap that may need that fill of God tonight. And so as we worship, we're just going to sing of the lamb that was slain and how holy he is and how holy he ever will be. Worthy is the lamb who was slain, holy, holy is he. Sing your song to him set so Sing. 
Mystic wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power. The lamb who was slain for us is worthy. He is worthy. Can you say that with me? He is worthy. Jesus Christ is worthy. He is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It is amazing that he has called us his children. He has won for us uh, salvation through his shed blood on the cross. May we never get used to that reality. May we never get used to the incredible privilege it is to belong to the household of God, to belong to one another in Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ, and to belong to the one who is the creator and redeemer. And uh, so that's a, an awesome thing. We're gonna continue uh, for the rest of the service, spend some time listening to the word of God, some time in prayer, and uh, just uh, encourage you to continue to uh, give your attention to the Lord as he speaks in the midst of our time together. Amen. Hello, Church of the Mission. It is time for us to gather together to pray. And as you can see, I've changed a little bit of my view today. I am situated outside where it is a bit windy, but it is a beautiful day to be in my neighborhood with the people that I live with in this building. And so when it comes to community prayer, I like to do perhaps something a little different today. If you're able to, to maybe step outside into your community, or if you're already outside, that's great. Um, but that we, or even if it means opening a window, that we take the moment to listen to the sounds of our neighborhood, uh, to maybe smell the, the smell of the nature, or perhaps a delicious meal that's being prepared right now and to hear the sounds of those around us, the, the neighborhood, the neighbors chatting, uh, the children playing, and whatever that may be, I pray that we become more sensitive to how God is moving and working in our neighborhoods. So I'd like to start off with prayer, um, and then I'm gonna have a moment of silence, and I encourage you to listen to uh, what it is that is right there in your neighborhood right now, and that God impresses upon you um, what it is that he desires for you to hear and to see and to smell. Um, and then I will close with prayer. So if you can join me now, that'd be great. Father, Son, and Spirit, we, we pray for the city that we live in. We pray for the people that we live amongst. And we know that we live among people who are made in your image. 
And because of that, we are blessed to be in their presence and to be experiencing your creativity and your diversity in human creation. And so, Father, at this time, I I, like, I'd want to ask you to help us to see, to hear, and to smell the things you want us to pay attention to. Father, we pray for those who are in traffic right now. We pray for that you keep them safe, those who are driving. Those who are walking among us, Father, keep them uh, safe. Father, for the families that are preparing for a meal, Father, may we pray for abundance at the table. We pray for an abundance in our community, in our neighborhoods, for food, for material uh, things but also an abundance of relationships, of social gatherings, of connections, Father. May we be a people who know your heart as we dwell here amongst others. Father, we thank you for placing us where we're at um, and for calling upon us to be your hands and feet, an extension of love and grace and mercy to those around us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I encourage you, as you are taking the time this summer to walk around your neighborhood, uh, to pray for the things that you see. Uh, it becomes a very meaningful way to engage your neighborhood and to cultivate a greater love for where you live. The scripture for today is John 13, 14. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the use so I tell you now where I am going you cannot come Simon Peter asked him Lord where are you going Jesus replied where I am going you cannot follow now but you will follow later Peter asked Lord why can't I follow you now I will lay down my life for you then Jesus answered Will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Chapter 14 Don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how, how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the word of God. We have been learning about the seven I am statements of Jesus. We have learned so far how important Jesus' I am statements are because they reveal that he is God and how he fulfilled the Old Testament scriptures. In the statements, Jesus also reveals more of his character. In the sermon series introduction, we learn that Jesus was before Abraham, meaning Jesus existed in eternity past and didn't only come to exist when he was born in Bethlehem. We have learned that Jesus is the bread of life and is like the manna that God sent from heaven to provide for and feed Israel when they were in the desert coming out of slavery from Egypt. We have learned that Jesus is the light of the world and he shines in the darkness. He also invites us believers to do the same, be the light of the world and shine in the darkness. We have learned that Jesus is the gate for his flock and that he is the good shepherd. He takes care of his flock 
protects us, provides for us, and has a special relationship with us. We learn that he is the true vine, the one who gives life to the branches, which is us, and he gives us life to love him and grow good fruit for him. We have learned that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Only Christ can take a dead soul and bring it to life. And only Jesus can take a dead body and bring it to life, just like he did with his friend Lazarus. Only Jesus has power to raise from the dead, as he did three days after being crucified. And Jesus gives his believers the promise of resurrecting one day and being with him forever. And today we are on our last statement, the seventh statement. We're not going in order, but this is now the seventh statement in the series. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So now let's look at what was happening when Jesus said this statement. Jesus is celebrating the Passover meal with the disciples and they're still in the upper room. Judas has been revealed by Jesus as the one who would betray him and has been dismissed to go and do just that. Now it's Jesus sitting with the 11 disciples and he's preparing them for the crazy weekend that they're about to go through. Although Jesus has been preparing them for years, they still don't understand exactly what is going to happen. Instead of the disciples encouraging and comforting Jesus for what he's about to suffer, Jesus is the one comforting them. They were beginning to get anxious, understandably so. Can you just imagine, put yourself in their shoes, you're celebrating, having the last supper, and your friend and coworker in ministry has just been called out and revealed by Jesus as the one who would betray him. Judas then leaves, that already makes the 11 disciples surprised, or maybe they weren't surprised, maybe they had seen Judas' shady character and they saw it coming all along. Yet, what we do know from the scriptures is that, that all the rest of the disciples still thought the best of Judas because he had the money bag. He was like the accountant of the group. So when Jesus sent Judas to go and betray him, some of the disciples thought, oh, maybe Judas is just going to go get some things for this weekend of the Passover celebration. You can read about that in John 13. Now it's just Jesus and the disciples. Judas has left. He's been dismissed. Jesus tells them he's about to go. The disciples get anxious because here is their leader, mentor, and Messiah. He has been with them day after day over the past three years. And he's telling them he's about to go and they can't come with him to the place that he's going. The disciples start freaking out a little bit. And they thought Jesus was going to a physical place. So they began to plead with Jesus to let them come with him. They asked Jesus, please Tell us the way that you're going to go so that we can find you and so that we can be with you. So I want us to actually hear their plea. Um, so we're going to hear from Peter and we're going to hear from Thomas. John 13, 36. Follow along with me. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I'm going, you can't follow now, but you will follow later. Verse 37, Peter asked, Lord, why can I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. So there we have Peter's plea. Now let's hear Thomas's in John 14. Verse 5, Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus didn't, sorry, they didn't want Jesus to go without them. I can't imagine how scary and frustrating it would be to hear your loved one is going somewhere but isn't telling you the address, and on top of that, you can't come with them. Where was Jesus about to go? He was about to go to the cross. It was something that he had to bear alone, because only he alone could die for the sins of the world. Only he would die for he only he would die for three days and then rise again. There are some things in life that you're going to have to go through alone and you'll have only God to understand you and comfort you. Yes, we are called to depend on each other and the church, but no one else can experience what you do. You have your brothers and sisters in Christ to support you and I definitely encourage you to reach out to them, 
But in those intimate moments alone in suffering, only you and God know exactly what's happening, only what you're experiencing. And Jesus was about to go through the greatest suffering of all time. And the disciples couldn't share in what he was about to go through. They could only do so from afar. Their suffering would be different than Christ's. Jesus was about to go to the cross and then to the Father. And he was telling them they will too. They're going to go to the Father eventually. And that they know the way there. Don't worry. You know the way, he said to them. Thomas's question reminds me of a child not wanting to let go of the hand of their parent, not wanting them to go to work and wondering why they can't accompany their mom or dad to work. It's a very tender and genuine question. Where are you going and what's the address? Said Thomas. He's really practical. And in other words, Jesus answers him, Thomas, I am the address. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way to heaven. Not one of the ways. I am the way to heaven. You know, in the culture that the disciples were living in, the Jewish people were seen as intolerant because they only believed in one God, whereas their culture believed in many gods. Does that sound familiar? We live in a culture where absolute truth doesn't exist. Absolute truth means there's only one truth. Instead, we live in a culture of relative truth. That means you have your truth, I have mine, let's live with that, let's live with all these different truths that exist. But the Bible speaks of one truth, one God, one way to heaven. I was with my nieces and nephew last weekend visiting. I love them so much and they're growing up and becoming teenagers and I pray for them all the time for their souls to love Jesus and know him and every time I see them I speak to them about Jesus because they're still at the phase where they listen they spoke to me about their Muslim friend who tells them everything she has to do in her religion especially at home in front of her parents to please her God Allah and uh, we began speaking about other religions and the things that they have to do too and I told them, you will see many people do different things to get to heaven. Every religion in the world will tell you, do this, do that. Here's this list. Here's what our scriptures tell you that you need to do. And then you'll get to heaven. But Christianity is the only one that tells you, you can't do anything to get to heaven. Jesus has done it all for us. We live in a world where we are told there are many ways to heaven and many ways to God whatever God you believe in. If you dare say, no, there's only one truth, that is countercultural. You are going against what this society believes. The message of the Bible is always countercultural. It doesn't make sense to the world. In 1 Corinthians 18, it says, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The truth that Christianity preaches can sound like foolishness to this world because it cannot see the truth. God has to take the blinders off their eyes, their spiritual eyes, to see these truths. To say there is one way to heaven and that way is Jesus will make a lot of people angry. The truth is that we cannot save ourselves. We cannot make it to heaven ourselves. I know of denominations who believe the city like Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, or even little cities, that cities are so corrupt so they want to go and live in the country where they feel they won't be defiled by sin. This is the mentality of monks, right? To get away from the world, everything, and go on top of the hill, live there. But may I remind you that Satan was in heaven when he felt jealousy and rebelled against God. And Adam and Eve were in paradise when they sinned and disobeyed God. We cannot save ourselves from ourselves. We need Jesus. That is the truth. Only Jesus can save. Only Christ, in him, we can find forgiveness of sin. 
Only in Christ we find purification and transformation, and only in Jesus we find our way to heaven. This is what Jesus was saying when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only way to heaven. There's only one road, one route, and that's Jesus. He's our only way home. We can only come to the Father through Him. If you want to know what the Father is like, just look at the Son. John 14, 7. If you really know me, says Jesus, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know Him and you have seen Him. Not only did Jesus reveal that if they have seen Him, they have seen the Father, nor does he only reveal that he is the only way to the Father, but he goes even further than that by telling the disciples, Jesus has to go so that he can prepare a place for them and ultimately for us as well. Go with me to John 14, verse 2. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. We don't know what heaven will be like, but what we do know from the scriptures, from the book of Revelation, is that God will bring down heaven to earth. And it's gonna be a city Sorry, all you country lovers, it's going to be a city <laughs> called New Jerusalem where we will live with God. And it's not an invisible place beyond space. Heaven will be a real, tangible place. Revelation 21.2 I saw the holy city, the New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a beautiful bride dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the th throne saying, Look! God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. Jesus needed to leave so that the gospel would spread through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit at, at work in all believers. Jesus finished His work on the cross and on earth, and now is working on preparing a place for us in the new Jerusalem. Jesus said in this chapter, John 14, that he is preparing a place for us. I don't know what heaven is going to be like exactly. Will we have houses? Will we have apartments in God's big mansion? Will we live outside? I don't know. Will there be a mix of all of, of that? Maybe. I don't know. What we do know is that we will be in God's presence. We will be made whole physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and Jesus will make all things new. We don't hear about this enough. Our relationship with Jesus is here on earth, but it's also eternal. Everything that we question on this earth, suffering, pain, injustice, sin, evil, and Satan, it's no longer going to be present in the new Jerusalem. It will all be bound up and destroyed. The utopia that every human being is looking for and desires on earth is what God has put in our hearts so that we could search Him. Jesus is the way to the Father and to the new Jerusalem. Jesus is the truth, the only true God. And Jesus is the life. We find eternal life, forgiveness of sins, and new life in Him. If God is nudging your heart, to come into relationship with Christ, let one of the pastors at Church at the Mission know. We would love to talk to you more about that and lead you into what a new life in Christ looks like and what Jesus offers you. If you already believe this, then praise God. We will one day enjoy the live presence of Jesus in the new Jerusalem. I really cannot wait for that day. Let's rejoice in that. We know Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. He is the one that we worship and we celebrate his goodness and his presence amongst us as the people of God, as the children 
that were purchased by his blood and we are amazingly blessed to know him and to have him revealed to us and all he needs is a little bit of faith from us and he is able to move mountains so may we continue to honor the one who is the way the truth and the life who rose again from the dead amen
to get up and dance. Where you leave, Lord, 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 I'm going to follow. Jesus is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, and he is worthy of all of our worship and adoration. Jesus Christ reveals God the Father to us. So Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we praise you and we thank you for your love and for your mercy. We thank you for your intimate knowledge of each of us. Thank you, Jesus, that you direct us in the way to go and that you reveal your truth to us and that you impart your life to us and through us. And may we honor and love and serve you this coming week as we continue to listen to your voice, as we read your word, as we spend time with you in our own prayer closets. Father, continue to reveal your light and life to us and prepare us, God, for how you want to use us after the pandemic. The pandemic will end and the shutdown will end and, and uh, we want to be available and present to you as a congregation, Father, uh, of the Young Street Mission and also as individual people within our families. Jesus, we want to bless you and love you and honor you. So may we do so, Father, uh, by the leading of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks again for joining us for the service today. After the announcements, the chat room will remain open for about 10 minutes. So we encourage you to stick around and uh, to give your greetings one to another. We do have the 
Wednesday night prayer meeting at 7 p.m. online, and we do also have the Thursday morning at 11 a.m. Bible study, all of which are available on the link tree portal, and that's going to come up in the announcements with details for that if that's new to you. So God bless you. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, now it is time for the announcements, and I'm going to give you the announcements. So if you need a pen and a paper to write some things down, go and grab that. We actually have a couple of extra announcements, and Young Street Mission is now going to be closed next week. Um, Canada Day is on Wednesday, July 1st, and, and there will be staff meetings um, all day Thursday and Friday. So we are going to be closed next week, which is going to mean that there is no um, Wednesday prayer there will be no Bible study on Thursday, and probably the Tuesday online course will probably be canceled as well. So, and just to um, make a note and tell people, there is going to be no food bank, and there will be no uh, Tuesday and Thursday meals. So please let people know that uh, may not uh, get these announcements. As we heard last week, um, our beloved Faith, who is an awesome worship leader and singer and has sometimes uh, preached here and been a part of our elders team, uh, she is moving to another church, um, his glory house where James is. And uh, there's a lot of people her own age there and um, she's going to be part of the worship team there. And uh, we want to have a blessing and a final prayer, pray over her, but that will happen when we uh, get together again. So uh, we are wishing uh, Faith well, and she will probably visit us since she lives in the neighborhood. And I just want to say, if you have a birthday or had a birthday last week or have one coming up, happy birthday to you. And if you've had an anniversary or you've graduated, Happy anniversary and happy graduation. And we will see you, though, again next Sunday. Okay, God bless.
where you leave Lord, 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 I'm gonna follow Oh, where you leave Lord, 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 I'm gonna follow Oh, follow you I was bound But now Where you leave, where you leave, Lord, 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 I'm gonna follow, gonna follow, gonna follow, oh, where you leave, where you leave, Lord, 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 I'm gonna follow, follow you.